Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, I greet you all this morning, this pleasant month, a month of women is in Bogoto. I come to you from WordPress Christian Center International and we do miss all the saints out there so much. Praise and thanks be given be to God for the updates that we have been receiving that the coronavirus infections are dropping and those who are infected are recovering. We give honor to God for that. And we are grateful to God for everyone who has recovered, who was infected. We are grateful that you have recovered and you are still among the living, in the land of the living, and you are a living soul. And we'd like to extend our condolences to all the families that have lost their loved ones in however manner and we were not able to come and be a shoulder that you could cry on because of the time that we are going through and all the reg regulations that we must stick to. Amen. I greet you all in Jesus' mighty name as I bring the word this morning. This is blessed Pastor Nomkosi Mahlang. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is alive. Your word is true. Your word, oh heavenly Father, your word says about it, forever it is established in heaven and so do we agree that forever it is established even here on earth we thank you for this time that we may come together and eat the word and eat the bread in jesus mighty name amen in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 1 the word of god teaches us that in the beginning God created the heavens and he created the earth. In verse 2, the Bible explains to us what was before God created. The Bible tells us that there was uh, how things were. There was no form, there was void, and there was darkness that was all over the deep and the Holy Spirit was hovering over everything. And God spoke. And when God spoke, he said, let there be light. Because there was utter darkness. He said, let there be light. And the Bible says, there was light. He sent out a word. He let out a word. And the word that he sent out and let out brought forth and created. It created out of being spoken, created and formed light that God could see. And we also can see. The Bible records in the book of Genesis that 10 times God said, 10 times God said, and after he said, there was something that could be seen. There was something that he saw. Then we understand that the word of God, whenever it comes out of his mouth, does not just go out and linger out there, but the word of God goes out and it begins to create, it begins to form. And after that creation and formation, there is something that is visible, that is tangible, that is evident and can be seen 
that God has, has sent forth for it and it becomes into being. Therefore, we understand that in the time when there was no form, the word of God went out, he created, and the world and the earth had its form. Today we are taught that the earth is round. We don't know how it was before God created and sent forth the word that the earth must have form. So when the word went out and there was void, the word of God brought into life structure, brought into life things into being. There was vegetation. There was so many things that we could see. The animals, the, everything that we can think about that we see on earth, the sun, the moon, the stars. God spoke out when, when there was nothing and some things, not something, some things came into being. When the world did not have structure, when, when the world was dark, I'm sorry, when the world was dark, the Lord spoke and there was light. And this is evident that whenever God speaks, something has to come into being. When we read the word of the Lord in the book of Psalm 138 verse 2, the word of the Lord says that you have magnified your word high above your name. And that tells us that God is very mindful of his word because he understands that whenever he speaks, something comes into being. Therefore, he never speaks when there's no need to speak. Whenever he speaks, there is a reason, there is a cause, there is a mission that he is going and working towards because he knows that whenever he speaks something will come into being and therefore the lord does not slumber he does not sleep he's not like you and i we can utter things in our slumber when we are sleepy and we are tired and say something and we speak error God does not slumber. He does not sleep. That's why the word of God is infallible. That's why the word of the Lord has no error. Whatever he speaks is something that he wants to speak. Hence, the word of the Lord teaches us that God does not speak and then call back his word. He speaks it and it goes forth. And the word of the Lord says, whatever he speaks, it goes out to do what he has commanded it to do. And it will come back with the results that he has sent forth for it to do. And so we understand what Uncle Uncle takes his word very seriously. That's why he has exalted it above his name. He exalts it above his name because the names of God are some of the names that he, had, he has been given by us. And we gave him some of these word names because of what we saw him do. We call him Jehovah Jireh because he provided. We call him Jehovah Rapha because he healed. And remember, with his healing, the word of the Lord says, he sends out his word and heals all our diseases, which means that it is the word that comes out first and then the healing comes after, which then makes us understand there is no deed without the word. There has to be the word that comes out and then we see a deed. We see something that is tangible or we see that which we are desiring and, and, and trusting God to do for us in our lives. The word of the Lord in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 tells us that the word of God is quick. The word is powerful. The word is sharper than any double-edged sword. It pierces between the dividing asunder of the spirit and the soul and the joints and the marrow. And it is the discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of the Lord is alive. That's one thing we must understand. Think about this. When someone comes to you, brings news to you, when they bring you news that are pleasant, that are good, and we call them good news, at the hearing of those news, your face lightens up. You get 
energy and vigor inside of you. You become excited. You know you gain strength as though you can go and attempt to do something else, another mission, because you feel at that time that, oh, I've got power. I'm, I'm, I'm invincible because of the good news. Equally, when you hear news that are unpleasant, news that are sad, your face dials up. Some people say, I felt strength leaving my body. Some people say it's better for me to go and sleep because there's nothing else that I can do. People lose their focus. People lose their, their, their confidence. All at the hearing of the word. If the word that a person tells you will change your life and your emotions instantly like that, how much more the word of God. The word of the Lord is too powerful. The word of the Lord is active. The word of the Lord works. The word of the Lord goes out and it does and it accomplishes missions. And some of us, we have been lied to and deceived that the word does not work. The word is alive. The word is is quick the word is powerful the word is sharper than any double-edged sword it's a sword that's different it pierces in front and it pierces be from behind that is the word of the lord and when we go to second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 the word of the lord says all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is not just some people who sat down and said, let us write the Bible. Let us think about it. What is it that we can put in this book? And then we call it the book of life. The word inspiration means that it was divinely influenced by God. This is the word that is influenced divinely by God. It is not like any other novel that you can pick up. It is not like any other study, study guide that you can pick up. But this is the infallible word of God. There's nothing concerning life that you cannot find in the word of God. This is, word, this is the word that is from God and not from men. It is from God through men but not from men through men from god through men when the word of the lord says it is profitable for doctrine it has the set of beliefs that we as believers in god must abide by must live by to govern the relationship that we have between ourselves and our god it is necessary for reproof it is necessary to rebuke us if we are missing a mark. The word is there to bring us back on path. It is there to realign us into the path of the living God. It is necessary for correction. This is the word that will tell us by doing this wrong, how can you rectify the wrong and come back into the right place with God according to his word? It is instruction in righteousness. It is our guidance. In this church, we believe that th the word of the Lord is our guidance. And we believe in the scripture in Psalm 119 verse 105 that says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path. It guides me how to walk. It guides me on which path I must walk on. Therefore, I don't walk as I please, nor do I walk anywhere as I please, but I am guided by the word of God. We as believers are to acquaint ourselves with the word of the Lord, with the scripture, the divine in influence scripture of the living word of the God, of the living word of God, so that we may know how we are to live our lives and we have divine guidance because of the word of God. When we believe the word, 
and we receive the word. The word builds our faith in God and it raises hope in us. Remember the word of the Lord says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Those who believe in God are those who must live by the guidance of the word of God. They must hear and be aligned by the word of God in our daily lives, not on Sunday only. But in our daily lives, we must be guided and we must align to the word of God. We must be those who take up our cross daily and follow him by doing according to the word and living our lives according to the word. Now these days we notice that many believers are led by fear and they are led by deceit. And these are the weapons of the enemy the devil himself yes we are living in tough times we are living in uneasy times there are, there is fright everywhere all about people are passing on there are reports of doom and gloom economies are crashing there is high unemployment rate there are so many scares of death and whatever we constantly hear that incites fear in us and we must cancel that fear with the word of God, with the promises that are written in the word of God. Fear that is engulfing lives, God has a solution for it. The Bible says, it is, it is recorded that more than 80 times in the Bible, God says, fear not, fear not, fear not. I am with you. Fear not, fear not, because God knew that the enemy, the devil, will use the strategy of fear to derail us from our victories that God has predestined us or for, has predestined for us, for our lives. He will veer us off from our path of getting the goals that we have already won through God. And that's the word of the Lord says, fear not. Fear not, fear not. Naturally, it is said that when we are fearful as human beings, we will respond in one of the two ways. We will either fight or we will take flight. We will fight that which is threatening us or we will take fl flight by running away from that which is threatening our lives. We fight in protection. We take flight in distancing ourselves from the threat. Likewise in our faith, when circumstances, when troubles, when peril, when plagues, when famine, when everything that threatens our lives comes against us, we as believers, we will do one of the two. We will either take flight by moving from our position of faith in God or we will fight by standing in our position in God and speaking the word. We don't fight not only of ourselves, but we fight through the word in the name of Jesus Christ. We see this in the example of Jesus Christ when he was tempted and tried by the devil. When Satan came to him, Jesus was rooted and grounded and he retaliated by speaking the word. When the devil said it is written, Jesus said it is written. He was never mingled in his thoughts as to what should I do. But he knew the word and he stood by the word and he was grounded in the word of God. The word of the Lord says that they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion which shall never be removed, but abides forever. They that trust in the Lord shall never be moved. And let me remind you, God knows them that trust in him. God knows them that profess to trust in him, but do not trust in him. Isaiah 40 chapter 30, verse 31 says, They that trust in the Lord, and other version says, They that wait in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall, they shall run and not faint. They shall walk and, not, and never get weary. Now, let us understand this. They that trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. In times when things are challenging you, 
When you trust in the Lord, you will not lose strength, but your strength will be renewed. In times of challenges in life, you will not succumb and descend from your high position of faith, but you will mount up with wings as an eagle in your faith in God. In times of trials and challenges, you will not stop running, but you will run on and you will not faint. You will run on and you will not get weak. Those who become weak and become tired, what do they do? They sit down. No, we will not sit down because we trust in God. For as long as he says, keep on keeping on, we keep on keeping on. We will walk and we will not faint. One thing about somebody who faints, out of nowhere they just collapse. They stop motion. It will not be our portion. It is not us who trust in God. We who trust in God, we will keep on moving. We will keep on moving because he will strengthen us. Just like when Jesus was tired, the Lord commanded the angels to come and endow him with strength. He will endow us with strength. He will renew our strength. We do not renew our strength, but it is God who renews our strength by faith in him and by faith in the word. The world, the word builds our faith the word the word builds our confidence in God and God is the one who strengthens us some people say well I'm still walking I'm still running but really what determines if you are still walking if you are still running are your works the word clearly stated faith without works is dead be ye doers of the word and not just hearers only, thus deceiving yourselves. Now my question is, if we can take a backtracking of ourselves before lockdown and now, where are you? Where are we in terms of our faith in God? Where are are you where are we in terms of our faith in God many people have forsaken the faith many people have forsaken their walk in God people are hearing the deception and the lies of the enemy so much that they are they are grounded by these lies and these deceit and they are in the fangs of the enemy the one thing that people are so much focusing on is planning for death if you can look at our social media so many advertisements about funeral cover about death cover about medical aids about hospital plans and a lot of people are running and following and responding to those advertisements. Which means that people are now focusing on death and no longer focusing on living. People are listening to the fear of the enemy when he says, this is the time to die. And the word of the Lord says, when Abraham died, his age was full. He had he had he had uh, 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 what's the word? He had exhausted all the days that he had been given on earth, and then he laid down to rest with his forefathers. If we say that we are the children, the descendants of Abraham, according to our faith, this should be our promise and our belief as well, instead of us planning for death. And I'm not saying that it is bad for you to put your things in order. We have to put our things in order. But whatsoever we plan must be preceded by the word of God. As believers in God. God says in Exodus chapter 23, if you abide by my words, I will take away sickness from your midst. God says, I will fulfill the number of your days. Do we still believe that he will fulfill the number of our days? Or are we just at the door? waiting for death to knock and we open the door and say come in as do as and do as you please the enemy is whispering lies 
and saints are forsaking their faith and their walk in God. We see a lot of people forsaking the word. The word is necessary in our lives because the word gives us direction. When we indulge in the word, our, our desire for prayer is heightened. When we distance ourselves from the word, even our desire for prayer diminishes. It lowers. It becomes very weak. People are distancing from prayer. Some people, even when they pray, they pray, Lord, protect us, Lord, protect us. It is a prayer of anxiety. And the word of the Lord says, be anxious by nothing. And be anxious with nothing. But in prayer and supplication, make all your needs and requests known unto God. But people are so fearful. They only pray, Father, keep us. Lord, you are the one who has power over the soul of a man. Ah, where is your thanksgiving in prayer? People have moved from praying for other people, from praying according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit because we pray and then the Holy Spirit takes over and we pray according to the Spirit of the living God led by Him. Many people no longer even tap into that domain. People have forsaken giving. The word of the Lord says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together shall men add to your bosom. When you will give, you will receive. A hand that gives is a blessed hand. People have stopped giving their tithes. And when we give the tithes, the word of the Lord says, he will rebuke the devourer for our sake. People have stopped giving alms, giving to the needy. People are now hogging everything that they have. And the word of the Lord says, when we give to the poor, we are lending to God. This is the principle of God. Whenever you release, that's when you receive. But men are hogging and saying, we do not know what tomorrow holds. Remember, flesh tag. Hey, God knows what tomorrow holds holds before tomorrow began he saw it before today happened he knew about it that is the God that we serve people have forsaken their worship and the word of the Lord says worship is pleasant to God it is like a sweet aroma before God and worship is our instrument of warfare we enter into a love fellowship where we worship God and there are things that are being taken care of that come from the camp of the enemy by the spirit of the living God when we enter into worship people have turned back to their ways before they came to God or before they strengthened their walk with God they now come nerves with a bottle of wine, no longer with prayer and casting our burdens unto him because he cares. How is your relationship towards your husband? How is your relationship towards your wife? Do you still love your wife? Do you still submit to your husband? How do you relate to your parents, you children? The word of the Lord says, you shall honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long on earth. How are you relating to your children, you parents? The Bible says we should not as parents provoke our children. And it means that our walk before our children must be upright because we are setting an example for them. How do you relate with people? Do you still relate with people in honor or honore? It's the end of the world. God has not declared it yet. And the word of the Lord says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Respect the next person as you desire to be respected as well. Truth is, many families, not all, but many families are in havoc. Because the word of the Lord has been taken out of the family. And the fact of the matter is that there is no state of vacuum in life. Whenever something is taken away, something comes in and invades the spot where that was has been taken away. When you stay without prayer and you stay without the word, you stay without confession, 
You stay without abiding by the words of God. You abide by your own ways. You live as you desire according to the people in the book of Judges. And there was so much sin that was running rampage on the land. When you live like that, do you even feel conviction in your heart? If you don't, then it means slowly you are pushing away God and the Holy Spirit who comes and convicts us whenever we fail or whenever we miss the mark. When we no longer focus on the word of God and we no longer read the word together nor pray together nor even worship, something comes and fills that space. Laziness. People wake up because they are not going anywhere. They do nothing. It was a child 4 p.m. in the afternoon. People don't even take a bath. It's as though they have given up on life itself. You find that there is excessive watching of television, excessive game playing, you know. You find that there's excessive cleaning. Every day is a spring day cleaning. Excessive gardening and all those things that really do not fulfill the inner man who is now becoming weaker and weaker and when he becomes weaker and weaker sin abounds in our lives the word of the lord is not circumstantial it is above emotions it is above seasons it is above everything because the word of the lord endures forever i will close by saying these are the times when we are being tested in our faith these are the times, according to the scripture, when the scripture says, the wheat will be separated from the tares. The real thing will be separated from that which is an imitation and look alike. But the genuine thing will remain. And Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And the word of the Lord says, when the son of man comes back, will he still find faith on earth? That is the question. And that is the question posed to me and to you. Will he still find you in perfect faith, in good faith, in strong faith? That is the question. Let us backtrack all our steps in our walk and determine where we are at today. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand before you, O oh God, the Lord who knows us in and out. There's no lies that we can speak to you. There is nothing that we can hide from you. Father, we submit ourselves before you and we say, help us to examine ourselves in all truth, O oh God. And when we have examined ourselves, O oh God, bring us back to our first love, to a place, O oh mighty God, of fellowship, with thee in Jesus' name. Take us up, O Mary God, from the pit of lies of deceit, O Mary God, and bring us to your everlasting truth. We pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I bless you.